Let's talk a little bit about the word advanced. I'm a believer that it's possible to organize our musical skill sets into categories like beginner, intermediate, and advanced. But truthfully, it's really hard to say where you as a person belong in one of those categories. Now, as an educator, I try to categorize my lessons by skill level, calling some material advanced and other content intermediate, but that's content. We can easily organize rhythmic concepts and musical notes by difficulty because some shit is just harder to play. But how do we do this with a human? How do you know where you fall on the beginner to advanced spectrum? Now, any answer to that question is gonna be highly subjective. Your overall skill level is reflective of a huge combination of skill sets, and it's likely that you excel in some areas and you're pretty terrible in some others. Now, while I'm a huge fan of running with your strengths and becoming a specialist with your instrument, I think there's a strong argument that to be a truly advanced player, you have to take a balance approach to this instrument and develop a huge variety of skill sets. In this video, I'm gonna talk about several different qualities that I believe all drummers must have in order to qualify as an advanced drummer. I'm Adam, the Orlando Drummer, and this is 10 Keys to Advanced Drumming. So technique is up first, not because it's the most important, but because I think it's the most obvious. I'm a believer that you can have variations in your technique based on your genetics, your playing style, the preferred genre that you like, and a number of other things. But to me, technique has always been about two things, health and efficiency. If you're damaging your body and wasting energy because of poor technique, it's probably gonna cause you problems in one way or another. Now, I know some teachers can be really strict with technique, and I don't think I'm one of them. I think for the most part, you can work out a lot of your technique problems by just being self-aware and making conscious, small adjustments over time. But the reality is you'd have a hard time finding advanced players that became advanced with poor technique. And with that said, you can find huge variations in technique among all of the advanced players. Something to think about. I say overall because dynamics can take a lot of shapes on the drum set. I'm not just talking about ghost notes with your left hand or the ability to play both thrash metal and Latin jazz. The skill set of dynamics is about having as much control over the volume of each limb as possible. The more dynamic control you have with each limb, the better you'll be able to texture the things that you play. There's a classic analogy that a drummer's limbs should be like the faders of a mixing board. Each limb should have its own independent volume that can be adjusted. Many grooves, patterns, and rudiments would sound completely wrong if you had the wrong dynamics. Obviously, learning the correct notes comes first, but learning to texture those notes properly is something that requires a little more attention to detail. Advanced drummers across the board have control over not only the notes that they play, but the dynamic levels of those notes across each limb. There are some qualities that drummers can have that just can't be rushed, and I think comfort on the kit is one of them. There's a certain look that players like Chris Coleman have when they play drums. It's that look that they're completely at home behind their instrument. You can almost see their body go on autopilot in many ways, and there's a confidence there that's earned over literally decades. This is kind of a crude example, but think about it like riding a skateboard. If you see someone just hop on a skateboard and push around a parking lot for a little bit, you can probably get an idea if they've been skating for one year or for 10 years. There will be dozens of subtleties in their technique and their balance that reveal their comfort level and overall control over what they're doing. It's kind of hard to define, but there's a certain level of relaxation that comes when you've been playing drums for a long time, and you'd have a really hard time finding truly advanced players that look tight or uncomfortable behind the kit. Know that that relaxed, confident feeling is something that is hard-earned over a long period of time, definitely not something that can be taught. I think most of us initially become drummers for a specific reason. It was probably a drummer you saw or a song that you liked, but the point is we all entered the drum world somewhere. So if Green Day was your entry point, that's awesome. But if learning pop and rock is the only thing that you ever focus on, you're gonna become a pretty one-dimensional drummer. Now, I'm a fan of running with your strengths, and I think it's ideal to have a preferred genre where you really excel. But remember that we're talking about advanced drummers. Striving to become at least proficient in multiple genres is something that you wanna to work towards. You don't have to become a jazz god if your heart is telling you to play rock, but completely dismissing every genre that isn't your favorite is not a trend that you'll find among high-level players. 
I'm hoping that playing to a metronome might be the most obvious point on this list, but it might not be for the reasons that first come to mind. The truth is that when you get to the upper tiers of gigging, you'll find fewer and fewer situations where you're allowed to be off of a click. Whether you're playing a stadium tour or recording a platinum album, the likelihood that you'll be expected to perform with a metronome just gets higher and higher. But here's the thing, you shouldn't learn how to play to a metronome just because other people expect you to be able to do it. You should get comfortable with the click because it makes you a better drummer. Even the most talented players in the world don't have perfect time, but it's something they spent a lot of time working on with the help of a metronome. The good news is any advanced musician will tell you that when you get really comfortable with a click in your ear, it pretty much disappears into the background. It doesn't always feel like you have to focus on this beeping in your ear. So stick with it and know that that gets much easier over time. For me, this one isn't the most obvious, but tuning is truly a fundamental skill that should parallel every other skill set on this list. As we become more mature as musicians, we tend to zoom in on the details of our sound. What you're actually saying on your instrument is just as important as the quality of delivery. Imagine delivering a brilliant speech, but mumbling through the entire thing. That's no different than playing a beautiful drum solo on a kit that is totally out of tune. For the most part, you'll have a hard time finding high-level players using instruments that aren't dialed in. And while some drummers might be using drum techs to tune their kit, the overwhelming majority of pro drummers have invested a lot of time into the skill of tuning. Drummers like Benny Greb didn't get lucky over the years, always finding himself behind a perfectly tuned kit for every video. It's a skill that he developed, and trust me, it's a really important one. Musical vocab is kind of an educator's way of saying chops. Now, I'm not talking about memorizing specific licks that you got off YouTube, though it's totally okay to have those. Your musical or your rhythmic vocabulary is a collection of predetermined patterns and rudiments that you can use to create musical or rhythmic sentences. Having this arsenal of drum words allows you to tap into your own mental library when you need to be creative. The ability to connect all of these patterns and ideas together freely is a sign of musical maturity and overall fluency in the language of drumming. Now, having a ton of licks memorized does not mean that you are inherently advanced. You have to learn how to file through that mental Rolodex and pull out ideas when they're appropriate. A drummer like Matt Garska is a great example of someone who has a massive library of ideas in his head. He's got an arsenal up there, but he only pulls out those ideas when it's appropriate to do so. This one almost didn't make the list because it's really hard to articulate the type of independence that I'm referring to. When I think of independence, drummers like Juan Carlito Mendoza come to mind. But I'm not telling you that you have to become some Latin wizard of four-way independence. The type of independence I'm referring to is more mental than physical. While I do think it's important to, let's say, be able to keep quarter notes on your left foot throughout a groove, there's other types of independence that are useful. So here's an example. If a guitarist plays a rhythm like this, you need to recognize that there's a sub pulse here. Now, the easy thing to do is just play the backbeats. But if you develop the mental independence to hear those accents on every third 16th note, well, now you have a few more options. To me, this is a practical independence, and it's far more mental than anything else. You develop this by having an understanding of time signatures, basic polyrhythms, and freedom in all common subdivisions. Speaking of which... Growing up without drum lessons, I spent way too long trying to play drums without understanding all of the basic subdivisions. Now, most of us know our quarter notes and our eighth notes, but because drummers oftentimes skip over whole notes and half notes, I've learned that we sometimes don't grasp the entire concept of rhythmic division early on. Without knowing the grid of subdivisions, you'll find that it's really hard to speak freely on the drums. For me, drummers like Yo Snickle and Chris Coleman are some of the best examples of players who are so free within subdivisions that they can literally swim throughout the rhythmic scale. And even if you aren't interested in their playing style, those are great players to reference if you're looking for examples of high-level drummers who have spent time mastering every subdivision, including less common ones like quintuplets and septuplets.
There are many, many qualities that a drummer can possess that will help them become successful. Versatility, technical proficiency, musical vocabulary, a good sense of time, professionalism. But the thing is, any one of us is capable of bringing those attributes to the table. With enough practice, anyone can be versatile, anyone can play to a click, anyone can show professionalism. But the thing that makes you different from everyone else is your feel. Your groove and your feel is your signature on this instrument, and it's something that's nearly impossible for anyone else to mimic. When I think of drummers with an incredibly unique feel, I think of Mark Giuliana. Now, I'm not a jazz musician, and I don't listen to very much jazz, but when I hear Mark play, it's undeniable that he doesn't sound like anyone else. His musical signature is extremely unique, and you have to imagine, in a world where lack of talent isn't really a problem, the thing that sets you apart from everyone else is your unique feel, groove, and touch on the instrument. In my opinion, some of the greatest drummers of all time are musicians that just sounded like themselves. Thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. If you haven't already visited orlandodrummer.com, I invite you to come check out hundreds of my best drum lessons, which you can stream instantly from any device. Link is in the description. Adam here, the Orlando Drummer, and I will see you in the next lesson. Later.